Hi, ladies. That was good, wasn't it? Um, you know, Debbie was talking about dancing in her mind. Um, it reminds me of, um, you know, I, I've always loved to dance, and um, <laughs> I can't dance like I used to, but I uh, <laughs> can't move like I used to. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'm the same way. I, uh, I dance like that in my mind. And um, I can't sing. <laughs> I'm not a singer, but... Um, when I'm in the car, I sing like a rock star, <laughs> you know? Uh, nobody's there. It's usually just me in the car by myself, and uh, I let it fly. <laughs> so um, when it's just you, just let it, let it go, you know? Because um, it's just you and God anyway, and he, he doesn't care. <laughs> and so... Um, do what you can. So um, I'm glad you're all here, and it's wonderful to see some new faces. And uh, some of you have talked to you, I know, on uh, Women at the Well, and it's great to have you here. And um, tonight we're going to talk about his unfailing love. And, you know, I know it's Valentine's Day and um, growing up we always wanted that special love and to find this special one and all that and we never really understood the true meaning of love you always wanted that special one and um, I really never understood love until I had a child And uh, someone told me that one time, you'll really get it when you have a kid. And they were right. There is nothing you won't do for your children. I mean, I would die for my children. And I'm sure many of you understand that statement. And um, that's kind of God. You know, that's, he has a, um, a love for us that is just unbelievable. It's indescribable. And um, so that's what we're going to talk about tonight. And um, just think about God's love for a second. And um, when we mess up, we really mess up. <laughs> I've messed up several times. Can we turn the heat down just a little bit? <laughs> I'm kind of sweating here. <laughs> oh, it's very warm up here. If if you're up here, it gets real warm. I guess. That <laughs> yeah. Um. Does he get mad at us? <laughs> does he yell at you? Does he turn his back on you? No. <laughs> yeah. How about your reckless behavior? How about when you have you ever kicked rocks at him? I have. A couple of times I have. Have you ever cussed him? I'm not going to answer that one. <laughs> I might have. Back in the day. How about uh, being mad at him, saying, I don't need him. Because you're mad at him. I don't need him. Being mad at the church. Because they hurt you. I don't need them either. 
I've been there. Have you? I left the church. Said I don't need them. They're just a bunch of hypocrites. I'll do it my own way. Well, that didn't work out too well either. <laughs> kind of like Dr. Phil. How'd that work out for you? <laughs> Not too well. Yeah, I needed him all right. So, how about when bad things happen? You ever looked at it said, well, God, why are you letting that happen? How come you're not stopping it? Why you keep letting it happen? You ever said that to him? I have. Why you keep letting bad things happen? Well, guess what? He's not. He doesn't let bad things happen. The world does, but he doesn't. The sin of the world does, but God doesn't. So we got to quit blaming him. And if you're blaming the church, and you're not going to the church, quit, quit, quit blaming the church. It's not God's fault. Find another one. Don't stay out of church. Go find another one. Because it's not God's fault. John 3.16, what's that say? We all know that one, don't we? For God so loved the world. Not just a little bit of it. How much of it? The whole world. He gave what? His only begotten son. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. His only son. He loved you so much that he would give his only son. The only one he had. That he would love the whole world. That he would give his only son. I'd say he loved us pretty much, don't you? Yeah, that's a lot, isn't it? So, he died on the cross. Let him die on the cross for all of us. On top of that. Because why? Of all our sins. Because of us. His love covers all our sins. Not just one. Not just two, not just 50, all of us. That's a lot of love, isn't it? How many people do you know that would do that for you? Not very many, huh? <laughs> we live in a world where love is usually conditional. And all about an emotional feeling. But God's love is what? Unconditional. Which means choosing to love regardless of circumstances. Unfailing. Which is faithful even when we are not. So what's that mean? Faithful when we are not. That means when we stray, 
He's what? He's still there, isn't he? Even when we decide to backslide or run and do our own thing, where's he at? He's still right there, isn't he? He's still right there. He never leaves us, no matter what. Even in our darkest hours, he's still going to be there. He's not going to leave us. Unmovable. How about that word? Loves us whether we respond to him or not. I loved that one. Unmovable. So what is he? Let's talk about that. In the Bible, it talks about a prophet who buys back his wayward wife. A father who patiently waits for his last child and welcomes home the prodigal son with joy. Remember that love? He's a father, a loving father, who hears my cry at night as I'm laying in bed. And no one else hears me crying. He sees my tears as I lay in bed. And no one else can see them in the dark. He's the one with open arms to comfort me, to hold me, because I just lost someone, maybe from divorce, maybe from death. Doesn't matter. His arms are always there to comfort me when no one else is. He holds me so tight, his arms, with his arms, and tells me how much he loves me when no one else does. He's the one I can talk to about anything and everything that I don't want to talk to anybody else about. That I can't talk to anybody else about. Because I don't want anybody else to know. I don't want to talk to a counselor about. I don't want to talk to my friends about. Something happened to me and I want to take it to my grave. But I got to get it out. And I need to talk to somebody so I can talk to him because he already knows about it. And if it's something I did, he already knew about it anyway. Or if it's something that somebody did to me, he already knows about it. If it's something that's bothering me, He already knows about it because he knows my heart, he knows my mind, he knows what I'm thinking, he knows what I'm feeling, he knows it all about me. And it's not just me, it's everyone. It's every single person. He's so big and so mighty that he knows every single person person every single person can you imagine being that big and that mighty and caring that much that's amazing 
amazing that someone would care that much about me. And not just me, about everyone on this earth. I can ask him for guidance. Which way do I need to go? What do I need to do? I can pray to him about anything. I can talk to him like he's my best friend. What decision do I need to make? Do I need to take that job? Do I not take that job? Do I move there or don't I move there? He leads me by my hand if I want him to. Do I do that or don't I do that? He can whisper in my ear if I allow him to. I can ask him for healing. Healing isn't just physical from a sickness. Healing can be from scars. Emotional. Mental. Sit with me, I can tell you about those. <laughs> I've had plenty of those scars. And they're all gone. I had a lady tell me one time, prophesy over me, that those would be gone one day. And I thought, <laughs> ain't no way <laughs> those scars are going to be gone. But guess what? God took them. He took them all away one day, completely. They were all gone. But I had to allow him in. And to take them. And I had to listen to him. And I had to allow him to completely take a hold of me. He can help me through the storms. Because guess what? As long as we're living on this earth, it doesn't matter. We're going to hit some storms. We're going to hit some bumpy roads. It's called life, unfortunately. Nobody's perfect. We're going to hit them. And it's just part of being on this earth. But he can help me get through them. I call them seasons. <laughs> and you can call them seasons, storms, whatever. But he's right there with me. And when them waves are hitting me and splashing me in the face, he's right there to grab my hand and pull me right up out of it. And hold on to me. And he's got me. And he's not going to leave me. I remember there was a time in my life when I was younger. And I thought, I don't have anybody. Everybody's left me. I can't trust anybody. I don't have anybody. Yeah, I do. I had God the whole entire time. He's all I need the whole entire time. What more do I need? As long as you got him, that's all you need. Because guess what? He can supply all my needs. He can make sure that that bill that I need to get paid, that I don't have a clue where that money's coming from, because it's not in my account. Guess what? He can magically make it appear. <laughs> <laughs> he can make sure something comes in the mail that I didn't know was coming. Those taxes that need to be paid that I didn't know I was going to have when I did my tax return that I was going to end up having to owe, he can make sure that I have the money to pay that. What about my kids? They need some new clothes. Maybe they need some new shoes all of a sudden because they're growing like a weed. He can make sure those needs are met. Even when I don't think there's a way. He can always make a way. 
Remember the story in the Bible about the fish feeding all those people and the bread? What did he do? He multiplied. And they didn't think it could be done. But he did it. If I remember right, there was some left over, wasn't there? Yeah. So if he can do that for them, you think he can't do it for you? Absolutely. Undeserving sinners. Are we undeserving sinners? Yeah. But yet he still forgives us. Over and over and over again. Continuously, no matter what. No matter what. Does he measure the degree of sin? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. It doesn't matter. We measure the degree of sin, but he doesn't. Never. We do that ourselves. To him, sin is sin. We're the ones that measure it. <laughs> We're our own worst enemy in that area, are we not? <laughs> In 1 Corinthians, it tells us all about love. Oh, I love Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous, boastful, or proud, or rude. Love does not demand its own way. Love is not irritable. It keeps no record of when it has been wronged. It is never glad about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith. It is always hopeful and always endures through every circumstance. Love will last forever. Oh, forever, ever. Then First John 4, 8. What do we know about that? God is love. God is love. Oh, man. God is love. We've heard that probably our whole entire life. But do we really know what it is? His unfailing love. So don't measure his love by what you know from the world. It's not the same. It doesn't even compare. They're not even the same. So don't even compare it. So if you've been comparing it, to the world, don't. They're not, they're not even close. His love never ends. He's always there. It never ends. Part of the vision of Straighten Her Crown is building one another up no matter what in different areas, um, cultures, religions, um, ages, and um, I want to share something with you. I'm going to try not to cry. Some of you know me. I'm a school teacher. And um, this year I've really been battling whether to continue that field, whether I'm making a difference or not. I've um, recently um, had to have some tests ran because um, had some health issues come up and um, 
I've had to run some a bunch of tests and anyway um god has intervened there and um we're gonna get some things taken care of god is good all the time yes and um I'm going to share something with you. I shared this with my mom. She went to an appointment with me in Tulsa yesterday afternoon, and I, a student gave me a note yesterday. And when we got back, I read it to her. And she started crying. And she said, you need to share this tomorrow night because this goes along with straighten her crown. And she said, this is... Um, the younger straightening the you know older woman's crown and um another student had straightened my crown a couple of weeks ago so i think god's showing me that i don't need to leave because i love teaching and that's my answer because I do love the kids, and um, I love a teaching. So I'm going to read you this note, because, you know, sometimes, you know, the s teachers are always supposed to be there for the students, but sometimes the students are there for the teachers. So um, it says, Dear Miss Hackler, I need to thank you for believing in me. And never giving up on me. I may not show my. Sorry, I'm trying to wipe the tears so I can read. <laughs> I may not show my love or thankfulness a lot, but I really do. I appreciate everything you do for me. Thank you for helping me when I'm down. Thank you for dealing with me and my my attitude. <laughs> because my teacher believes in me, I never give up. Now I'm flying toward my dreams. You inspire me a lot. You may not know, but you make school feel like home. <laughs> it wasn't my favorite place until I had class with you. I love you so much. And so it's the little things that's a straightening of my crown, letting me know that I, yeah. So, and the other student, I've had a couple moments where I was very emotional a couple times, and this student would come up and just love on me. And she's a very quiet person person very reserved and you would never expect it out of her and um so i let her know so what i'm saying is it's important that you acknowledge that's part of that straightening your crown because you know you never know what that's doing in return for that person and so I let her know privately what she was doing for me by her showing me her emotions for me. So, yeah, so I just wanted to share that. And um, so tonight we're going to have a, a time for prayer. If any of you would like to come up, we're going to have the team come up. And we're going to allow you to um, be prayed for if you need prayer. So, um, Aaron, if you play some music in the background. So if you feel like you need prayer at this time, I'm going to ask the team to come up.